everybody, and welcome to another episode of Total Football Talk. I'm not Anthony, I'm Eric. I'm Anthony. I'm not Eric. Um, this is a football one. I was supposed to call LT with you. LT, sorry. Things got crazy. But uh, Eric's moving out here soon, so we'll do lots of shows. Yeah, I'm going to apologize too. And then forever I brought out my LT jersey. Didn't wear it, sorry. Absolutely. All right. So, transactions to this point. Um, we're going to cover that. Um, do you have the top 10 teams picking? I know of the top 10 teams. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just cover the Rams and Bears and see what you pick. Yeah, we can get into a little bit of the Cardinals, too. I mean, yeah. we, are, we are local with them. I mean, we can kind of go like Cardinals, Niners, Raiders. Um, I know. Talk about these teams. Briefly, uh, Giants are at uh, six. Um, I know the uh, Jaguars are up there, so maybe just maybe just a handful of teams off uh, within within the top ten. But uh, why don't we start with the Rams first? Well, um, there was news <clears throat> that the Rams have an interest in Blake Bortles. No uh, pen to paper has taken place yet. Uh, he's a big fan. I like it. I like it. Blake Bortles took the Jaguars to the championship game a few years ago and did it the way a backup quarterback would do it. Um, he showed me that season he was more than capable of being a backup QB. If he's your starter, you've got problems, right? And you need a lot of help around him. But what do the Rams have? They have a strong defense. They have a good receiving core. They have a running back they can lean on. It's exactly what the Jags rode to the championship game a few years ago. I get what you're where you're going with it. And I'm looking at him as a backup, not a starter. Two problems. And one is that the Jags signed him to an extension last year, which they knew if he had a bad year, he'd be gone. So to sign him to an extension and then cut him a year later and then give $88 million to Foles, I mean, what are you doing? Um, well, that's not his fault. That's no, the Jaguars. It, it's not his fault. It's the Jaguars' front office. It's uh, uh, Shad Khan's fault to, uh, to for allowing that to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, they were ready to move on from Bortles last year, and part of me thinks that they should have. Uh, I think that if Bortles is your backup quarterback and he actually gets extended playing time for you, that you're in trouble. I, I really honestly think that. I don't think that he can reclaim that that light that he had two years ago. All I need him to do is play within the confines in which – the coaching staff's going to play him. I don't know why so many people are running around thinking, oh, your backup quarterback will eventually be your starting quarterback, or at least that's the mentality, right? I don't care if he gets extended playing time. He's in the system. He learns the playbook. He's got pieces around him. He's better than Mannion. And you know what? He's got a better arm than Mannion. He's willing to take chances that Mannion isn't willing to take. I don't need him to be, you know, Jeff Hostetler. I don't need him to be Drew Brees. I need him to be a better backup quarterback than what we got on a discounted rate, which is what we're getting. So I like the move. I mean, I look at the other quarterbacks out there, and I'm like, who are you going to get? I know a lot of people are getting hot and horny over these guys in the AAF, but, I mean, I look at the AAF, and I'm like, those are guys that weren't good enough to make a pro roster that they had to go play in another league. Now, some of them may get to be a pro roster, but you're going to sit there and tell me that any one of those quarterbacks is better than Blake Bortles? I'm sorry. I'm going to disagree with you. Body of work proves that. None of those guys led their team to the conference championship game. And whether that was a flash in the pan or whatever, I don't hear these people carrying that same – conversation around with Nick Foles. It takes coaching to turn a guy around. We'll find out if the Rams quarterback, head coach is a quarterback whisperer. All I know is what we have on the roster right now behind Goff, we won't win a single game. Yeah, there's nobody really behind him. Who was your third quarterback last year? I don't even remember. Uh, he, he, he's currently the backup quarterback because Manny is a free agent. So, yeah. you know, if they make – I don't know if you consider Bortles a splash, but if you make a splash, I mean, you have a good one-two combination that not many other teams can say they have in the NFL. I mean, 
if all you're asking Bortles to do is is take the snap from center and hand off to Gurley or, or C.J. Anderson or Malcolm Brown or whoever the heck your running backs are, and if, if, if Gurley's not playing because of his his knee, I mean, that's what you got to live with. Or you tell him in the earpiece with 15 seconds to go who he's throwing to. You used to do that. Right? And you know he's Throw to the guy triple coverage. Yeah, no. That's what he does on his own. <laughs> right. You don't have to tell Bortles to do that. You tell him, don't throw to the guy in triple coverage. Right? I don't know. I, I don't I don't I'm not sitting here, I'm not gonna do a jig and say, Super Bowl baby because we signed Mannion. But I am gonna go oh, not Mannion, Bortles. I am gonna take a deep breath and go, okay, backup quarterback's a little more secure than it's been since we moved to LA. So there's that. Anything else the Rams have made a splash about? Uh, all quiet on the home front ever since uh, the first wave of free agency hit. So we'll see. We'll see what other holes that they uh, come up with. And how about in Chi Town? In Chi Town, well, they did sign a safety. Bears and Packers basically flip flopped their uh, uh, starting safeties from Adrian Amos to Haha Clinton Dix. And haha jokes on me. Yeah, haha jokes on me. Uh, I, I don't know whether to applaud the signing or, or shake my head the signing. I, I mean, he got burned in Green Bay, didn't last in Green Bay, went to Washington. They didn't re-sign him. They had an interest in it, and then the Bears stepped in. But it's it's for a one-year deal, so I've always said no one-year deal is a bad one-year deal. So we'll see what kind of um, secondary help he is along with Eddie Jackson. I think I, I think with Eddie Jackson there, even though Eddie Jackson's younger than Clinton Dix, I think that he's gonna he can easily make – Ha ha, better, and um, we'll see how their secondary is because I'm sure he'll be covering a lot for Buster Scrine. But um, you know the Bears lot ended up losing Bryce Callahan. He ended up signing with his old D coordinator, now the head coach in Denver, Vic Fangio, for three years, twenty one million. So I think he kind of outpriced himself, and that's why the Bears went the Buster Scrine, ha ha, Clinton Dix route. But other than that, Jordan Howard is still on the team. Um, no word about. If he's going to get traded uh, or if any other signings are going to happen. I mean, I mentioned maybe on the last show, the Bears uh, signed Cordero Patterson. I think that really shows up for special teams. Yeah, I do like that signing a lot. Um, But Clinton Dix, we'll see. Only because, like, I thought the Bears had a shot at him in the draft that he came out, actually. Um, That's the draft that the Bears got Kyle Fuller, who I thought the Bears should have selected C.J. Mosley, who ended up getting $85 million from the Jets. So, so there is a couple other moves that I want to talk about. Yeah, uh, Kareem Hunt suspended for eight games. Eight games. I uh, I always said that it was going to be more than the six games because they always said you know any type of domestic assault is six games. But he had three. There we go. Three. He had three um, strikes against him in the form of there were three investigations going on with Kareem Hunt uh, and the NFL, and I was guessing right around a half a season. So. I mean, hey, you never know. You're going to get some fresh legs coming in in the week eight. But the only problem is, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. You're going to agree with me. Um, it happened. It's happened with the Cowboys, um, <clears throat> I believe, with Zeke Elliott, maybe somebody else, Greg Hardy, when they had him. But, you know, for eight weeks, he can't be around the team. And I think that – I think the NFL needs to change that to say, hey, let them be around the team. Just you can't go to the game. I mean – you should be able to get in like a limited practice, but you're not going to take the reps away from a starter like Nick Chubb or anybody like that. Why not let them be at the game Run. without pads? Look, it keeps these guys out of trouble. Yeah. You know, the very idea that you did this on your own outside of football, so we're going to take football away from you completely, which is exactly what happened in the off season when you did this to begin with. So now we're going to do this to you again, but on a longer scale. Through the... It's stupid. It's yeah. like – you know, come on. They need they need their teammates more than anything. You, you, the longer oh, Josh Gordon, it happened a lot with Josh Gordon. Yeah. The longer you structure. the longer you keep them away from the team, the the more prone they are to get into trouble and prolong that. Uh, now the exception of that rule is if there's a conviction and they're arrested, and they're in jail. Right. Then they're in jail. But if the legal system isn't going to throw them in jail, then why are you throwing them in football jail? That doesn't mean they collect the check. That doesn't mean that they, you know, that they're accepted, you know, widely by 
the organization. What it should allow the organization to do is it gives them time to actually put them through an anger management class, maybe get them set up for some charitable work that has to do with maybe a battered woman shelter in the area and kind of get them into a different mindset than the one these guys are, and these athletes are currently in. Um, I'm going to say something right now, and I know that this is going to get pushback, Eric, but I'm going to sit here and tell you right now, I guarantee you 100% of these athletes that have committed domestic violence in the NFL were either high on marijuana, had done marijuana, or were currently using marijuana. Maybe not at the time of the incident, but I've seen what drugs do to people. And I've seen what the dependency of drugs does to people. And that's not saying everyone who does marijuana beats their girlfriend. Right? It's that old adage. Not everyone who does A is A. But everyone that's B is A. Right? It's, it's kind of just the way it goes. These NFL athletes are the ones that have families that are structured, that are clean. They don't get in trouble. Guys like, well, geez, off the top of my head, I could think of four really outstanding athletes that are, are really well-grounded. You've got Dak Prescott. You've got uh, Gordon from, from San Diego. You've got, you know, huh, Brady. Yeah, you've got um, Donald from the Rams. You've got um, Jackson. From Chicago, you've never heard Jackson get into trouble. Oh, I said you were moving closer. Doesn't there. matter. He Plus, went to Alabama. Yeah, he went to Alabama. But I'm, I'm not saying like Alabama's like you're always going to be, you know, 100 percent with your nose clean. But you you rarely hear of guys. They uh, draft in character trouble. people, right? Right at, at Alabama. Nick Saban doesn't doesn't stand for that kind no. of stuff. I mean, so there's a model out there for these athletes to follow. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, to be honest with you, it's like oh, another domestic violence thing. But here's why I bring up Hunt before we get to Tariq Hill. The starter is Nick Chubbs. Right? So here's a guy that was looking over his shoulder. Well, now he's got eight games to prove to Cleveland that Kareem Hunt's going to be a very, expensive, a very inexpensive backup running back and a possible trade bait. I don't see him seeing the field much the first 12 weeks of the season. I think after Thanksgiving... They'll spell Chubbs a lot more because he'll need it. He'll have their backup, and they're going to have a really good, solid running back in Chubbs and a guy that they can trust coming in because I don't see, I don't even think they're going to put two in him. Well, week nine or ten, depending on when their uh, bye week is, you are going to expect to see more than you thought of Kareem Hunt. I don't because, think he will. Because he'll be able to start practicing within a week or two before he comes back. Uh, but he's got to learn the system. I, I think he's going to be trade bait, and I think there's going to be somebody out there who's going to be like, you know what, we need a running back. Let's trade for him. Uh, try not to give up too much. Uh, Cleveland's going to ask the world for him. And if not, you've got a great backup. Yeah, I think it's a good move. You pulled up an article today that said Cleveland was picked to win the North. I did. Vegas <laughs> had Cleveland uh, as the odds to win the. Which field. let's think about I'm that. Not, I'm not. How can you be Cincinnati? I, if, if Cincinnati's a dumpster fire, Pittsburgh's a train wreck, and Baltimore's dismantled. I'll tell you this much. If Antonio Brown was still on Pittsburgh, and Le'Veon Bell was still on Pittsburgh, I probably would still pick the Browns. Really? I would. I would. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. So, fun fun days in Cleveland. Fun days ahead. He was right. LeBron who? Yeah. Baker. Mayfield. Yeah. There you go. Um... Yeah. Another, so, another NFL athlete who thinks it's a good idea to treat his girlfriend. Not his girlfriend. His son. Oh. So Tyreek Hill is engaged. And so his name is not actually listed in the report. But his son showed up with a broken arm. And it's Tyreek Hill's son. That's his fiance's son. And so everybody's like, oh, um, Tyreek Hill must have done something. Now we don't know the full story but wanted to come out with this only because, you know, Tyreek Hill has had his problems in college where he got uh, kicked off the uh, Oklahoma State team back in 2014. And they didn't really make a 
big deal about the draft when he was in it. But then, of course, like when it started coming out that Tyreek Hill did this and that in college, everybody wanted Tyreek Hill gone from Kansas City. And Tyreek Hill is up for an extension. Like he was looking for, you know, anywhere between 50 and $70 million uh, on his next deal. Well, with all this coming out, does he get it? Does he get suspended from the NFL? I mean, they I, I saw I saw a screenshot of the incident report and whatnot. And Tyreek Hill, like I said, is not named in the incident report. It is his son and he had a broken arm. So of course people are well, then why un- is this a story? Uh, why are we even bringing this up? Well, because we don't know the full story as far as did Tyreek do it or not. So we're, they're trying to uh, go through that information. But I wanted to get it out and see and have anybody comment, say, if, if they know he did it or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I mean. You better have some facts. Yeah. Um, but, but his name is in the news for that because his son has a has a broken arm and everything. He could have fallen out of a damn tree for all we know. Could have. Could have. But it's not the first time we've heard of a prominent player and their child being Stop. hurt. Adrian Peterson is an old school parent who did the same thing to his son that his mother did to him. He showed pictures, or he didn't show pictures, because they didn't do that back then. But I promise you, and I know, having friends in that community, okay, when you pull a switch off a hickory, it don't tickle, and you have welts, and you have marks, and you have bruises, and you have bleeding. Now, to be fair, I didn't see the pictures. Did you? No. Okay. Now, I have a real problem. When I hear people critique somebody like Adrian Peterson on how to raise his kids when their kids are running around, knocking people up, doing drugs, dropping out of school, when your, when your closet's checked and there are no skeletons in it, feel free to throw stones. But if you live in a glass house, which many of us do, be real careful 